Welcome to Epic TV Weekly. The results are in, and here's what we've elected to show you this week. Snowboarder Xavier Delarue's white noise goes all the way to 11. Election fever may be over for some, but for us adventure fanatics, it's just getting started. Be glad you're not a bunny over at the world's most hardcore sailboat race, the Fondé Globe. Surfer Matt Wilkinson was on fire at the O'Neill Coldwater Classic, and it's not just because of his crazy wetsuits. This week, all eyes are on the Bay of Biscay for the start of the Vendée Globe. Epic TV's Jules B. was mingling with the yachting crowd this past week and talked to skipper Tanguy de la Motte, who tells us about some of the sailors' more peculiar beliefs. So I found out since I got here that there are a few things one is not allowed to talk about on a boat. Yeah. One of them is a little furry animal, and yeah. I'm too scared to say it because I don't know what the deal is. Can you yeah, explain yeah. that? Uh, as superstition is uh, very different in di different countries. So uh, I guess in uh, in France and in the old uh, sailing ships were, were made out of wood. You are not allowed. Uh, that's why we are not on the boat right now. Uh, we're not allowed to say the word rabbit, but it's in French. <laughs> Yeah, he used to uh, eat uh, the bottom of the boats and uh, eat, eat the wood because they probably get uh, got out of food. That's what I remember from my kids' <laughs> story. So why were childhood. the rabbits on the boats in the first place? Uh, to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's the deal with women? I found out uh, women that's, are not That's like uh, Italian superstition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've got nothing against that. <laughs> Sadly, I'm going alone. <laughs> I sail with some people that uh, we are um, from uh, Papua New Guinea and they say the, in this place to have a banana on board is bad luck because uh, you slip uh, overboard. So uh, in England, uh, you, I think you, it's very bad luck to have green on your boat, but um, I guess next door is a green boat and uh, Ameri uh, English uh, skipper. So I don't think uh, uh, I don't have a superstition in the way that uh, things will bring me negative things. I have a superstition like little uh, uh, things that will bring me positive things. You may not have voted in the U.S. presidential election, but that doesn't mean your vote doesn't count. Election fever has infected the world of adventure sports with a couple of reader polls you should definitely get stuck into. Over at freeskier.com, they're holding their annual Free Skier Magazine of the Year poll with voting currently underway. The contest works in a draw sheet type format, where skiers like Candide Tovex went up against Mike Hornbeck, and Eric Pollard faced Pep Fujas to go from the round of 16 into the quarterfinals. There's also a women's bracket that opened November 8th, so get over to freeskier.com and make a difference. And if for some unknown reason your world extends beyond the world of skiing, then check out National Geographic's Adventure of the Year Awards. This award covers a broad range of athletes, including kayaker Steve Fisher, snowboarder Jeremy Jones, celebrity skydiver Felix Baumgartner, and several others. Their formula is simple. Everybody can vote one time each day, and the honoree with the most votes on January 16th wins. Australian Matt Wilkinson brings back the fun-loving party boy spirit to the over-competitive world of pro surfing. And he does it all while getting to the finals of the O'Neill Coldwater Classic. We are loving this guy. I love kind of every part of being a pro surfer. You get to travel the world and surf good waves and hang out with friends and I guess we overachieve with the other other sex as well, so that's pretty good. I guess I guess it'd have to be Chopu last year. Um, the ten I got against Jadson, it was like massive chopes, and I, I was paddling for a wave. I'd, earlier in the heat, I'd got smashed and um, and kind of thought I was dying. I like hit the reef and cut up, got cut up pretty bad and. And it popped up right before the next wave landed on my head and, and then Poto kind of saved me and I went out on the ski and I was like, I'm dead, I'm dead. And he's like, just relax, just relax, it's fine, like get your breath. 
then I like felt myself and I was like, oh, I guess, I guess I have to go back out. This sucks. I went back over into the lineup and another massive one came and I was in the spot. I took it and I kind of was pretty late and then I got a 10 on it. And I just remember like, as I like got spat out into the channel, I just like got like tingled. If seeing is believing, then I'm showing you the difference. Xavier Delarue is one of the best big mountain snowboarders ever. Epic TV ski editor Andreas Franson Skyped him up to ask him about his new film, White Noise, and to find out what's next for a guy who's at the top of his game. Hey, Xavier, how's it going? Good, how are you, Andreas? Very good. It's great to have you on the show. Yeah, it's great to see you, great to talk to you. Uh, firstly, I uh, like uh, to talk about your film. What is different from uh, your last film? Well, the rhythm is a lot different, you know, and it's not just a uh, time based, it's a bit more arty and, um, and uh, it's a bit different. It's lots of uh, insights of um, yeah, thoughts yeah. Uh, on, uh, on fear and stuff like that, what's happening in my head. My snowboarding is a constant battle between the good and bad voices in my head. One that reminds me of all these incredible sessions. And the other one which tells me this could be my last. Like quite often before a session in the night I'm pretty scared, you know. I, I think that everything is gonna go bad. I think about everything bad that could happen. Mm. But then uh, once I find myself on the terrain at the top of a line when I have a good plan in the head, mm. I feel comfortable. What are these the three parts? Uh, well, three parts is uh, well Alaska. That's quite classic. And then we went to Devoluie, you know, to ride those caves. Mm -hmm. It's like those um, tunnels in the rocks that are 50 degrees. I would love yeah, to see it's that like in the film. The snow goes inside with the wind. It's hard to believe when you're there, but yeah, it worked really well. You know, the oddness of the of the spot is something yeah. that you've never done, and yeah. it's really crazy. It's fully dark in the middle. We finished the season with some nice uh, sessions in in Zermatt, making like kind of classic lines and um, and like yeah, a little bit of ice riding, and stuff like this, having fun around Serax. It was cool. And what is it that you want to show uh, from the Alps? I don't know. It's just to to try to picture them in a nice way. High Alpine here is really powerful with uh, the glaciers. It has a lot to uh, to show and and yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's inspiring. <laughs> I agree. It's been a pleasure talking to you uh, as always and all yeah. the best. Thank you. Cool. Cheers. <laughs> That's all for this week. But before I go, did I mention that Epic TV's got a brand new iPad app that allows you to watch films like Xavier Delarue and TV20 even when you're offline? Well, there you go. Now I did. Until next week, charge hard and take chances.